All right, today we're going to talk about this Aruba Instant On AP25 Wi-Fi access point. So this is an access point that's really designed to give you really strong Wi-Fi coverage as well as a lot of features that you can't get in a lot of other um, Wi-Fi routers or things like for a consumer, or, you know, for home use. This is really um, small business grade. And I'm, I'll go through and show you these different settings that you can get that you might really like for your business as well as the type of Wi-Fi coverage that it can provide you once it's installed at your business. And now I saved the time of the actual unboxing because there's not a whole lot of uh, parts in the box itself. You get the access point itself, which is designed to be a wall or a ceiling mount. And that comes with this uh, plastic adapter piece. This is what you actually screw to the wall. And then this uh, has these little tabs in here that you go in there and you lock it into place uh, once you install it, um, once you install the bracket on the, um, the wall or the ceiling. And then it does come with an Ethernet cable. Now this can be powered with the Ethernet cable with a power over Ethernet if you have a PoE switch or a router. Or you can also use the um, AC adapter to actually plug in uh, directly to it and then your Ethernet is just your data transmission cable. So the other thing I'll make a note on right now is that this also has the option of being Wi-Fi mesh, meaning it doesn't have to have an Ethernet cable at all. It can actually have just power and it can be connected to your other um, Wi-Fi access points through just Wi-Fi to extend as a mesh network. But when you pick up the device itself, if you were to uh, fill this, it actually is quite heavy compared to a consumer grade one. It's because it is aluminum for all this backside. This is like a heat sink because it has a lot of power to it. This is actually Aruba Instance on most powerful access point, the AP25. They have other um, access points that are um, a little bit smaller and they also have lower output but this one's really designed to give you the most output and so this is really designed to add on to a existing ISP that you already have so this is not a modem it's not a router this is an access point it does have gateway and firewall capabilities and features and we'll, we'll show those in just a minute here but what it means is that let's say you already have a internet service provider at your business and maybe you even have a Wi-Fi um, you know, built into that gateway that they provide and you've been using it for your own employees, but maybe your clients or customers are looking for Wi-Fi and you don't want them connecting to um, the one that your actual business computers and devices connect to. That's where you really want to expand your network and you're using a, something like this where you have an access point and you can create a separate network with the gateway and um, and firewall features you can actually separate them out and you can keep customers and clients not only separate from your business internet but you can also apply limits to them and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that meaning you can restrict the types of services that they access you can restrict their bandwidth you can uh, restrict time of day all kinds of features that I'll get into and that's really the point of this is that it's not just providing this open door policy of let anyone hop onto your network and then they have free reign this allows you to do a lot of control and on that note this is just one device but you can have many of these devices in your um, business and also the other beauty I love with the small business stuff is that it's very scalable so you can start off with hey I'm just gonna add one for my main office space and then hey I want to have an outdoor patio and have uh, good Wi-Fi out there you can add on to this in the future without a problem. You don't have to change uh, this device that you put in today. So that's what I really like about this kind of stuff. Let's uh, plug it in, get it powered up, and then I'll show you on my tablet here how the setup is. It's supposed to be very quick and easy. So it'll be my first time. So let's see what it does. So in the box, it also does come with a couple of pamphlets here. The main one here is a little card that has a, um, a QR code for you to go and download the Aruba Instant On app. So that's what we'll do here on my tablet. All right, so here we are. This is an Android device, so it is on the Google Play Store. But I'm downloading the Aruba Instant On app. All right, so you do have to create a account with Instant On, but it's just a um, email and a password that you uh, set up. And then now we're doing a, um, you know, the first thing it says you have to look for a device. Here we're obviously looking for an access point. They also have uh, switches out there. All right, so here the first setup, it does ask you if you are connected uh, directly to a modem that has no firewall or router capability, or if you already have your own uh, firewall and router capability that's built in. So if you're not quite sure if you already have that or not, if your device from your ISP already has like a Wi-Fi router built in, or they call it a gateway, that means it typically does have a firewall and a router in it. 
and certainly if it transmits Wi-Fi out um, that means it does have that uh, router built into it if they say it's just a modem then it would be the second choice here but for this one I'm gonna say yes it's the first one and I'm gonna be hooked up to a um, an existing gateway or firewall you can see here this flashing red light so it is telling me that I do need to hook my uh, access point up to my gateway with Ethernet cable so to do that we have to move it um, over or closer to where it's going to be installed so I'll do that and then we'll continue this setup all right, so I went over and installed the unit and I plugged in actually in a power over ethernet setup. But let's go to the next step here and we can see that uh, it is booting up, but I think it is already alternating between the green and the orange like it says here. So I'll go ahead and say next. All right, so you do have to type in the serial number that's actually on the sticker multiple places in the front and the back of the unit as well as actually your box. But then it instantly found the device, so I'm going to click Add Device. And now I can give it a network name. So this is the SSID or the Wi-Fi name that you see out there. So for this one, I'm just going to call it um, Aruba. Something easy. And then I do need to make a password, obviously, for it. And then here you can name your site. So this would be if you, you know, obviously for me, this is my first device on this site. So um, I don't have anything else. But once you set up a Aruba site, then you can add multiple devices in. You can also have multiple sites. So you can have multiple businesses or offices and you can have them as different sites. And what's really cool about this stuff, the small business stuff, is that you can actually manage those sites um, in multiple devices all in this one app. So it's really neat that you can do that. Uh, so this one I'm going to create a new site just called Aruba Site. All right, so it says it's ready to go. All right, so this is obviously the main page and it shows me the top in green that everything is okay means it has internet access it shows I have one active network there in the top left that's because I just set up that one Aruba Wi-Fi network and then the top right it shows I have zero connected clients which is true I have not connected anything to that just yet and then I have transferred zero bytes of data in the bottom left and I have zero of one devices online so this is where I can hook up now this tablet itself back to that device I right, so when I click on it, the reason why it is um, not online is actually because it's installing software. So when I first plugged it in, it actually um, went in automatically. It does a software update, which makes a lot of sense. So we'll let it complete this, and then we'll get connected to it. All right, so it did the software update, and I can click on it here, and I can look at some more details there. It, it tells you that it does have a hardware um, uplink, and that it also tells you what the local IP address of the device. You can go in there. And you can set up this statically if you prefer. Um, or I'm just going to leave mine as automatic, meaning it's got its own IP address. Next, we can look at the ports. You can see the Ethernet port. I guess the one thing to mention that I did not mention before is that this has a 2.5 gigabit per second Ethernet port, which I find very important over a 1 gig one because in today's world, a 1 gig Ethernet port can actually be your bottleneck now that you have Wi-Fi capability that is much faster, especially if you have a lot of devices on it. So I do like that 2.5 gigabit ethernet port now uh, you can go into those settings and you can change it as a vlan if you wanted to to make it on a separate v stands for virtual so a virtual lan network which will keep it separate from other devices on your connection now uh, you can also see the clients and devices so this is looking at that lane because i have multiple devices hooked up uh, through that ethernet uh, throughout here and so you can see all those on there as well but next we have the radios. So this is the Wi-Fi radios. And you can see we have both 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. They're both under that Aruba um, name that we set up at the beginning. And here you can go into the settings. Now what I really do like about this Aruba Instant On setup is that this is very simple to go through. It's very intuitive. I've never used this before and I'm just going through it for the first time. It makes a lot of sense. And everything is laid out very simple. And then if you do want to change something, like here, you hit a toggle, and then it shows you some more complex settings that you can get into, and it kind of has different layers that you can get into. But this one here is just telling you your channel width that you can set up for the Wi-Fi. You can also pick what channel selection and how much transmit power you want out of the device. And you can do that both on the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz. Also, on the network assignment, you can see we already did, um, you know, assign it to the Aruba. If I make a new network, I could assign the AP to have different um, networks on there as well. And then in the bottom it has access points lights. You can change those lights, especially if you have 
that device mounted out um, and it's either employee or customer facing, you might want to um, have the lights dim on it. So that is some of those settings. Now if I go to the top right and hit those three dots, I do have a couple options there. One I can do a locate and that will make the lights on it actually uh, flash. So if you have multiple out in a uh, space, you can look at it and say, okay, which one is flashing the lights and then you know which um, AP you're actually uh, connected to or talking to. Next on those three dots, I can do a connectivity test. So this is something that would allow me to test um, connections. So for this one, I'm gonna try this just to connect to uh, Google um, DNS. And we'll just see what it does here if it actually uh, pings and connects. And, all right, so there we go. So that does do a quick ping test and I just ping Google DNS. And you can see there, I get my, uh, my ping round trip time down below. All right, then in here also at the top, there is the topology tab and that one just you know for me I only have one client connected so it doesn't really tell you a whole lot but it says one client is connected to that access point. If I go back and switch to the bottom here I can click on site health this is showing me everything's okay but if there were past alerts if something you know if there were um, any issues errors they would pop up and show you here and then it shows you that all my devices are, are online meaning all my access points. So if I have multiple access points it would alert you that hey you have one that is down or whatnot and you can run a connectivity test here as well. So here is my networks. And so again, I can uh, hit add on the bottom right here and I could add multiple networks. So I could have one for employees and guests. So let, let's create a quick guest network here. And we're just gonna do Aruba guest. And just to show you how easy this is to create something. And then you can decide if you want it to be password protected or open. And then if it is password protected, you could have it so that it um, you know, has different uh, security protocols. So for this one, I'm gonna make it open. So I'm gonna have it open, but I'm gonna allow a, a guest portal to happen. And so let's go into these settings and just see what that means. So this is something where a guest would see this page when they wanna to connect to your network. They have to at least read uh, this information and agree to the terms before they, they actually connect. All right, so right here at the top, you can type in your own terms and conditions. For me, I'm just gonna type in like and subscribe. That's for you, of course, as a viewer, to like and subscribe onto this channel and this video. And then I can also copy and paste more terms and conditions in here if I want to. And I can change what the agreement text is as well. All right, and then when they click the accept button, you can change that as a redirect URL. So you could send them to your own website if you wanted to or some other um, site or thank you as well. And again here, they keep it very simple for you. So it's very intuitive. But if you want more options, you can hit the more options. And now you can get into a little bit more of the nitty and gritty for that actual um, network. We can go in here to the IP assignment where we can tell them what subnet mask and what IP range we want them to have. And for this one, it defaults with a guest network to a separate IP address altogether, uh, which will help you identify that, hey, that person's on, the I on a guest network based off their IP. And then we can also change the schedule. So we can, again, add in here when the schedule is set up and when they can connect so that you could have it based off your office hours or uh, business hours. Again, here we can also do bandwidth limits. So we can um, do it based off either the client or the network itself. So we can have the total you know, guest network have a total cap, or we can say, hey, we want each person to only have so much speed capability so a single person can't hog all of your network capability. And this is where you can set that up uh, right here. All right, and this is the default for a guest network. You want to typically restrict their access so they do not have internal access to like your business computers or business devices. So that's where you do restrict it here. But if you need them to access a specific device like a server or something like that, you could add that specific IP address for that device here and that would open it up uh, for that address. And then wireless options, you can change it between having a hidden network, um, Wi-Fi 6 with combined 2.4 R and 5 gigahertz, or you can have those as separate. It does do um, lots of different capabilities for quality of service. Aruba Instant On already optimizes for things like uh, video streaming to not have a lot of lag, voice over IP, that kind of stuff. But you can do it further here um, with these um, buttons. You also have a few other settings here for the Wi-Fi radios as well. And this one is saying if you had multiple access points, you could restrict access um, to that network on only certain APs. So if you wanted to have a dedicated access point or multiple access points just for your um, customers or guests, you could have that set up here. And you could say, hey, these other APs, I'm going to um, keep those solely for my employees or other use out there. 
Ice Oil hit done. And now that just created a new Aruba guest network out there uh, for people to connect to. All right, if I go over to my clients, I can see that this is my tablet that is connected. And I can go in here and look and see how much data it's moved. I can see um, what the rate is and that I'm connected to the 5 gigahertz automatically. Also in the top right, if I hit those three dots, I can see I can add it to my watch list. I can also block the client. So if I know this client is maybe up to no good or I don't like them, I can uh, have it block it so it no longer can connect to there. Speaking of which, I might as well go in here to my speedtest.net app and do a speed test. All right, that's some really good speed, and that is my full ISP speed. I'm about 15 feet away. The access point is actually in a closet um, kind of behind the camera. And you can see here I'm getting that full speed um, from the access point out here with a good signal on the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. All right, and then next down here we have the application. So this is another interesting thing. This allows you a little bit more insight into the devices and what the usage is. And this one is showing me the last 24 hours the um, usage for all the networks. But I can change that to just a, the main Aruba one or the Aruba guest or however many uh, ones you have set up. And you can see here that it shows that uh, obviously there's not a lot of data. They're talking about the kilobytes of data here. Um, that has gone into it, but this breaks it down and shows you uh, what it is now You know, you can see some of this stuff is maybe like adult content You can go in there and you can change that and you can say you know what? I don't want either of my networks to have that so this will block both employees and customers from going on adult content You can do the same thing for gaming streaming um, Right here you can just cut it off and say I don't allow the streaming service to actually happen So this will block that type of content uh, so that people aren't um, using uh, those types of services at your business. All right, well, let me test the range of this device out by walking around and just seeing how far the signal actually travels and what kind of speeds I get. All right, so I went around and did some testing. Now you can see I pushed uh, over 6 gigabytes of data through, and I will tell you that it is working very well. The coverage is actually extremely good. So I used an app called uh, NetSpot to actually get a quick Wi-Fi heat map of this basement down here. So it's about 2,500 square feet. It's got lots of uh, rooms in there that are not shown on this map. But you can see it's all green and you know barely any uh, color change. And that means that it has had excellent signal throughout all of this through any types of walls or whatnot. And I had no um, issue with getting the full ISP speed. I was getting like 400 megabits per second download throughout this entire space without a problem at all. Now I also went upstairs and again the signal does propagate very well through um, different uh, spaces. Now the heat map I did just for this um, same floor that the access point is on but I also went upstairs as well and I do get good signal up there and get fast speeds but of course if you have a multi-floor space or if you're bigger than 2500 square feet you probably want to consider um, starting to add more APs as you expand out. But this certainly is not the limitation of this space. It could travel much further and still get a very good speeds out there. So I was very happy with the coverage and capability and the um, switching between 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz works seamlessly with my device. Okay, and I do want to show you one more settings. If you uh, hit the top right where you have that little, for me it's an N icon because of my, my name. There is a communication preferences and uh, notifications. This is the notifications tab and I wanted to kind of show you that you can adjust your no notifications and back to where I showed you before we could add someone to a watch list. That um, is an option here where you can get notified when that uh, IP address or sorry that MAC address actually connects to your service. It gives you a notification there through the app or through email that that person um, connected to your network all right so hopefully that answered a lot of questions i will say i was very impressed and it has actually probably the fastest device i have set up a lot of these say it's two minutes but actually takes me a lot longer this one was truly plug and play it probably took me longer to add my email address to make an account for the aruba instant on app than it does to actually set up my device to connect to the internet so that was quick and easy and I will say I was impressed with also how well it performed speed wise and the coverage was actually very good uh, for a device that size. And this must be because it's their uh, most powerful access point that they sell. So I recommend it. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. I'll try to get to them. And as always, uh, subscribe to my channel if you have not in the past so you can see more videos that I make.